Hello guys, uh, today in this video we are going to discuss about time dependent Schrodinger's equation. So uh, the wave function of a particle moving in x direction is given as psi of xt psi represents the wave function which is a function of x and t here is equal to a e to the power i kx x minus omega t. So here in this equation, if you will substitute kx in terms of momentum and omega in terms of energy, as we know, p is equal to h bar k. Here we are writing only in x direction. So we can write px is equal to h bar kx. So kx can be written as px by h bar. Same for e, energy is h bar omega. So omega is equal to e by h bar. Substituting this kx value and omega in the above equation written for uh, the wave function of a particle moving in x direction, it can be rewritten as psi of xt is equal to a e to the power i then we substituted for kx as px by h bar and omega as e by h bar. Once you got this wave function in terms of momentum and energy, then let us see if you'll take the partial differentiation of the wave function with respect to time, what we will obtain. So if you'll find out the partial differentiation of the wave function psi with respect to t, we can write this way a e to the power i ps px x by h bar minus e t by h bar and then if you will see here the function the time part it gives you i e by h bar with a minus sign so this is what we got for del psi by del t now this whole term the first term here that you can see which is a exponential of this whole thing is nothing but the wave function psi itself. So we can rewrite it as del psi by del t is equal to minus i e by h bar psi. Further, you can write it h bar divided by minus i del psi by del t is equal to e psi. This h bar by minus i can further be simplified as i h bar del psi by del t is equal to e psi. So here if you'll see that i h bar del by del t is actually e. So here e, the energy is considered to be an operator and the operator is i h bar del by del t. Same way, if you'll take the partial differentiation of the wave function with respect to x, we can rewrite it as a e to the power i pxx by h bar minus et by h bar multiplied with the x part as you can see i px by h bar. So that can be rewritten as del psi by del x equals to i px by h bar and this whole function you can see is psi itself. So that we can write px psi is equal to h bar by i del psi by del x. Further, this h bar i can be written as minus i h bar del psi by del x. So here if you'll see px is also the momentum in x direction can also be considered as an operator given by px is equal to minus i h bar del by del x. So starting from the previous equation, minus i h bar del psi by del x is equal to p x psi, we can find out the operator for p x square, which we are going to use further. So here, if we will take the second order partial differentiation, right, del square psi, del square psi upon del x square here, you can see, right is equal to px and the partial differentiation of psi with respect to x. 
Further, it can be simplified as minus i h bar del square psi by del x square is equal to p x. And here you can see del psi by del x can further be written as i p x by h bar psi. which can be written as i p x square by h bar psi. So writing for p x square, you can write as an operator minus h bar square del squares del square by del x square. I'm not using this psi over here. Okay, the psi is removed then it gives you the operator for p x square. For a non-relativistic free particle, the total energy E of the particle moving in x direction is equal to its kinetic energy. Because the potential energy for a free particle is zero. So we can write the total energy here is equal to the kinetic energy, which is written as EK here is given by PX square by 2M as it is one dimensional or moving in X direction only. Multiplying both the sides of this above equation with psi, we can rewrite it as E psi is equal to PX square by 2M Sign. So we have already derived the operator for E and PX square. So let us substitute the value of these operators that we have obtained. That is E psi can be written in the operator form as I H bar del psi by del T and PX square psi can be written as minus H bar square del square psi by del X square. Substituting these values, we can write the one dimensional time dependent Schrodinger equation for a free particle moving in X direction. So for a free particle, there is no potential energy function. So that is what we need to keep in mind. So finally, we can write the equation, the Schrodinger equation in one dimension in X direction and uh, the time dependent Schrodinger equation we said, given by I h bar del psi by del t is equal to minus h bar square by 2m del square psi by del x square. Now what will happen if the particle is moving in a force field described by potential energy function Vx, what will happen to its total energy. So as we know the total energy is equal to the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. Here the kinetic energy is given by Px square by 2m and the potential energy function is written as Vx. So the Schrodinger equation we can rewrite substituting the energy as an operator. So E psi is given by I h bar del psi by del t and Px square psi as minus h bar square by 2m del square psi by del x square that we have already done. So substituting the E psi value and Px square by 2m psi value, we can write the Schrodinger time dependent equation in one dimension for a force, force field where the particle is not free and is bound and is having some non-zero potential. In three dimension, if you want to write the same Schrodinger's time dependent equation, we can replace this operator del square by del x square as a Laplacian operator, which we have discussed in one of the videos. You can refer to that to know what is a Laplacian operator or a del square operator. So substituting or writing for a three dimensional case, okay, we can write the time dependent Schrodinger equation in three dimension as i h bar del psi by del t 
is equal to minus h bar square by 2m del square psi plus v psi. The first equation represents one dimensional time dependent Schrodinger equation for a force field. And the second equation represents three dimensional time dependent Schrodinger equation for a particle in a force field. If the particle is in a free field or there is no force or the particle is considered to be free, then the potential energy function here will not be there and it will be zero. Thank you for watching.